9,991 subscribers. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and just checking my uh, YouTube channel here. Uh, still not quite at the 10,000 mark. Nine more subscribers to go. Today we're going to do a little project or start a little project that I've had on my to-do list probably since I got this meal uh, a little over two years ago. I think as most of you know, these Kurt style vices, uh, this is not a Kurt, it's just Kurt style. I think most of you know that the jaws on this are movable. You can bring them around to the outsides and hold wider, much wider pieces. Of course, that means removing the four screws that's, uh, that holds them in there, screwing them onto the back or onto the outsides. Then when you get done, of course, reversing that whole process. Oftentimes, I have little projects where I would like to hold something wider. This is a four inch version. It, it actually opens up to just a little more than four inches, about 4.2 inches, not quite four and a quarter. But oftentimes I'll have a piece that I want to just hold in here, drill, do a little milling on the end, uh, whatever, simple task. But to do that, again, would mean removing these jaws, putting them out here. So since I've had this meal, I've always thought about making a set of jaws to put on the outside and leave out there. I really don't think they're going to be in the way. Uh, I'll round the corners on this outside one out here, uh, one where I'm at, to kind of keep from jarring, kind of like these edges are chamfered on here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount these back in here right now, get them set back up. And then I've got a piece of A36, just came in the mail just a few minutes ago. And we're going to set that up there, get a good edge on it, and cut us a strip off of it uh, about two inches high. I'm going to have these up here high enough that can I can set a workpiece on here and clamp it down with the outside jaws. So let me get these mounted back down and I'll bring you right back. One more thing I'll add uh, about the inconvenience of moving these jaws just for a quick job is getting the bolts in and out. This is a four inch vise. The larger Kirk vices, larger vices, six inch, might be a little easier to get in, but even the, the short hex key will not go in there. And using this, you know, you get maybe not quite a half of a turn each time. So I found a little something that makes life much simpler when you are moving your jaws. And it is a good idea sometimes just to take these jaws off and clean out from under them, clean out from behind them. But I bet there's a good chance you got an air ratchet in your shop. And just that simple, they can be put on there, on and off, much simpler. But that's not going to uh, dissuade me from, from making our set of outside jaws that we're going to make today. So stick with me, and we'll get the piece set up in here and start milling on it in just a second. Okay, I've got a piece of material in the uh, mill vise now. This is a 6, six inch by 12 inch by half inch thick piece of A36. I'm going to uh, clean this edge up just a little bit. Then we're going to turn it over, clean the other edge up. These were flame cut edges that were very hard, but I carried it over to the uh, Tuba 72 uh, belt grinder 
and cleaned off, cleaned that edge up pretty good, but of course, I'm sure it's not square. So I'm going to... I'm going to see if about 10 thousandths will clean that up. I'm using a Niagara half inch uh, roughing end mill for this. This piece is a half inch, but I'm letting it uh, hang off the side just a little bit. I'll make two passes. Okay, that didn't quite clean up. Let's come on down. All right, that's just touching down here now, so we'll go back in the other direction. We're not really wanting to waste any material here. We just want to get enough to, to get it squared up and cleaned up. All right, I'm going to continue this process right on down to the end, and we'll step it over and get this other little edge here. I'll flip it over and do the same thing to the bottom side, just to be sure it's they're square and parallel with one another. Then I'll bring you back when I got the slit and saw in, and we're ready to cut our uh, two-inch slab off. All right, I've got both edges cleaned up now. They should be parallel with one another. Oh, slow back down a little bit here. Got the slit and saw in, and I'm going to turn it on and just touch off on the top of our workpiece. All right, I've set zero right there. Now I'm going to back the piece on out of the way. So there's our zero. Our saw is a hundred thousandths thick. And we want a two inch piece, so I'll go two inch one hundred thousandths. I'm gonna have to get this handle out of the way. And probably this one as well. So there's two inches and one hundred thousandths. And I'm gonna give it another twenty thousandths just for any fluctuation in the saw, and we want some grinding space. We are going to surface grind these. So now let's, let's get some coolant down here to or get ready to get some coolant on it. All right, I've got a little issue here, clearance issue. All right, I've swung the camera around here, so I hope you can see where the issue is. For the saw, for the workpiece to be far enough forward that the saw will go all the way through, the workpiece is completely hidden behind this. The top of it over here, you can't even see the, my finger back here. But it's completely behind that. So I've got a different arbor that I'm gonna try. Uh, I've actually, this is one that is a saw arbor. I'm gonna try this one right here that's a homemade arbor, uh, exact same slit and saw that goes into a collet. So I'll try that and bring you right back. All right, let's try this other arbor we've got here. I'll get the workpiece under the saw. And again, just bring it down till it touches. Zero out the DRO. Now we'll come down 200 thousandths, I'm sorry, two inches. And then 100 thousandths for the thickness of the saw. And then about 15 thousandths, 15 to 20 thousandths. For grinding space, and it looks like we've got plenty of clearance now. All right, let me see if I can get the camera and everything in a little better position so that you can see what's going on. 
All right, I've got a little coolant on there. Now I'm turning at about 600 RPMs. And I'm going to cut this full half inch thickness in a single pass. All right. All right, there's our piece cut off. Good smooth edge on there. All right, what I'm going to do now is carry this over to the bandsaw and cut it to length, cut two pieces to length. Cut the two pieces saw to length now. Uh, got them just a little bit long. They will sit like this. Of course, we've got considerable more work to do before we're ready to set them on there. I've got a couple parallels here. And I'm going to set them on and clean up the ends. And even though these were sawed at the same time, I'm not going to take, try not to take any chances on them uh, not sticking together. I'm going to put a couple pieces of uh, aluminum wire in here. All that'll do is just help be sure I'm pressed down on both of them, top and bottom piece. So everything should be tight now. All right, we'll lock down right there. I didn't tighten my uh, end mill down. All right, we need a couple more passes. All right, now I'm gonna take just, just a few thousandths on climb milling. All right, that's not looking near as good as I'd like for it to. Let me try slowing the end mill down just a little bit. That, that mill may be dull, but we're going to try this. All right, that's considerably butter. I was just turning a little too fast there. Okay, that's much butter. I'm going to turn it around now and start working the other two ends to the length. We want 4.275. I'll bring you back when we get uh, back on the last cut on that. All right, keeping these two ends together, I've got it clamped back down in there and made a, a small cleanup pass to get the two ends even. And I've, zero out, I've zeroed out the DRO. And that's 4.293. We want 4.275. So that's 18 thousandths we need to take off. So what I'm going to do is take 15 thousandths on the conventional mill in the conventional direction. Now I'll get that other three thousandths 
fine milling. That's about three thousandths over. I'm going to call that good. That is fine just like that. Now before we go over to the surface grinder to clean them up, of course I'm going to get some burrs off of it first. Then I'm going to lay out where we need to drill our mounting holes. Back over here at the workbench now, and what I'm going to do, or what I did, was take one of the uh, jaws off of the vise. And there is a top and bottom of this, so I'm lining up the two bottoms. And they're the same length. I'm going to take a transfer punch. Just get a little indication. That's all I want to do is transfer that mark. All right, now that I've got that mark indicated, I can take a real punch and a real hammer. I suspect these the spacing on these are, are a nominal value. It looks like two and a half inches. Well, what I'm going to do is set this first one up in the mill and zero out at one position, drill it, and then move over to the other one and mark the, uh, or make note of the DO, DRO reference there, put the second one in lined up the same way and drill those holes. So let's go back to the mill now. All right, I've got the bottom of the jaw uh, up against the fixed jaw on the vise, and I've located this, uh, this first punch. So we're gonna spot it. Now, while we still got the spot, or while we've got the spot and drill in there, I'm gonna move down I've zeroed out the DRO. Now, as I said, this looks like about two and a half inches, but I'm going to go on my spot because I suspect it's a metric value. Come up to 2.522. Before I started this, I lined this fixed jaw, the edge of it, with the edge of our new jaw. These are 10 millimeter uh, screw holes. Let's see. I believe I need to get a little tighter. All right, now we'll come back to zero on our x-axis. And we're gonna counter bore these for the socket head cap screw. But because this is only a half inch thick, I'm not gonna counter bore the full thickness. If I did, they wouldn't wouldn't leave very much at all uh, of actually gripping. The heads are three hundred ninety-four thousandths, uh, and if I was to go down that, that wouldn't leave much more than a hundred thousandths uh, to to bite on. So I'm just going to zero out the DRO right here and go down 250 thousandths. Remember this will be on the outside so it doesn't really matter if the screw heads stick out. All right, 
want to do the same thing to the other jaw, and then we'll meet over at the surface grinder and start cleaning these pieces up. All right, I'm over at the surface grinder now, and we're going to surface grind one edge, or one surface, of course, then flip it over, do the other side, then we'll put the vise up there and do the edges, top and bottom edges. I think I've just just touched off. So we'll come down a thousandths. We just want to find any high spot. That little bit of spark you're seeing right there is the burr from uh, doing the counter bore. Should be getting close now. Yep. Just grazing it, both pieces. This, I suspect, is hot roll material. starting to make contact all the way across both pieces now. I'm going to run this a few more passes until I get all the, get down to the bottom of all the pits. I'll bring you back when we get ready to make the, the final dress uh, cleanup pass. All right, I think we've got it pretty close now. There's a few just minor pits in there, but remember these are the surfaces that will not be touching any material at all. I'm gonna go down four more thousandths and make one more pass. All right, I think I might have said go down four thousandths. What I meant was four tenths. Now I'm going to go down two tenths now and just make a spark out pass going back in the other direction. Hopefully you can get an idea. That was the uh, factory edge. So now we're going to turn it over. Turn both pieces over and clean up the, uh, the other sides. Same way. These sides have got a side I'm fixing to turn up now. It's got a little pitting in it, so it's going to take several more passes probably than it did on the front side or the outside, but we're going to do that the same way, and then I'll bring you back when we uh, uh, get ready to do the top and bottom edges. All right, I've got the jaws in the uh, machinist vise now. Of course, it's uh, magged down to the chuck. Uh, we've actually got one of the surfaces up is the uh, sawed surface, and the other one is the milled surface, so we're going to Again, just like usual, try a quick pass across there to see, to try to find a high spot. I can see a little bit of a roll on that edge, so that's just a burr there, and I'm sure we'll contact first. All right, let's take one thousandths. We'll keep going down a thousandths at a time until we are con making contact all the way. Now, I can already tell between that saw cut and the end mill cut, and this was over about eight and a half inches, we're within two thousandths. 
So I'm guessing my meal is pretty well trimmed. Just one little spot on this back corner back here, and that is very well where I touched off the uh, slit and saw. Well, we're just going to keep going until we get it dressed all the way across. Alright, that cleaned it up all the way. I'm just going to make a pass now with four tenths. Again, just, just to clean up any marks. Now just a spark out. Alright, I'm going to flip this over to the other side. And then I'll bring you back when we get ready to put a little chamfer on the uh, uh, outside edges of probably only the jaw. Well, we'll look at it. We may do both jaws, but I'll bring you back shortly. All right, I took our jaws back over to the uh, workbench. I put a little red Sharpie on the edges I want to uh, chamfer. I've got some magnetic transfer blocks, 45 degree uh, magnetic transfer blocks on the mag chuck now. I'm going to set that down, mag it down. Now, what I, all I'm going to do is simply touch off on that edge and then set my zero on my dial up here and go down some amount, probably around 40 thousandths, 40, 45 thousandths. Uh, do that on this edge. Do it on the same edge on the other jaw. Then we're going to turn them up and do these end edges and probably even the top edges. So let me get it close now. All right, that appears to be very close. All right, I'm going to go down just touching at that end. All right. Now I'm going to set the zero. You can't see it in on the video, but I'm going to set my zero. And I'm coming down a thousandths at a time. Now, to be sure I'm compensating for anywhere in the uh, wheel, I'm going to traverse it across there. All right, that was about 32 thousandths. All right, that's 45 thousandths on the dial. I've done this before, and 45 thousandths look like a good chamfer. And again, I'll traver traverse it across the wheel to be sure I'm comp compensating for any wear on the wheel. Hopefully you can see this, but I put a 45 degree on there. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one, then I'll bring you back when we get ready to, to do the ends. All right, I've got them end ways in there now. They're sitting on the uh, transfer blocks, magnetic transfer blocks, down here, 45 degree angle, got them bedded in there. And these are just basically for support out uh, here. There's a lot sticking out there. So we're going to try and see if that, uh, see if it'll hold. I've touched off, I've zeroed. So let's try going down 45 thousandths here. All right, that's 35 thousandths. Now we'll just, again, traverse under the wheel just to make up for any wear on the wheel. There's our 45 thousandths. 
we'll turn them around and do the other end. There's our 45 thousandths. All right, now we're going to get set up to do those top edges. We've got here, here, and here. I think I want to do just a little bit right there. So I'm going to put them face to face. And let me see what kind of setup I can get here. Not a whole lot of magnetic transfer standing these blocks up on the end here but I think I've got it secured now we'll touch off and get us a zero looks like it's seated in the 45 degree angle block good all right we're gonna call that one a zero Alright, there's our chamfer on all the edges that we want to chamfer on. Which of course is here, 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 there, and there. Now the only thing I didn't surface grind was these ends right here. And they are a very good finish for a meal. But they're not quite as good as all the other edges. So let's see if we can get set up right here and take a grind those ends. It shouldn't take but just a little bit. Shouldn't have to put the vise back up there either. I believe this will hold it. And we're just going to clean that top up there or these outside edges. All right, that cleaned up all the way. Four tenths and a small step over. All right, I'm going to carry these over to the mill, uh, get them mounted on the vise, and we'll wrap this video up.
All right, I'm back over at the mill vise now. We're ready to install our jaws. Be sure we got a good clean surface. And we're gonna take our air ratchet again. Now, on this one on the movable jaw, I've got one of my uh, brown and sharp rules here that, uh, or scales. It's about 20 thousandths thick. I'm going to set that on the ways of the vise before I tighten down. And that way, this jaw is not riding on the ways all the time. It's, I know it's, it's off just a little bit, about 20 thousandths. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when I was doing the countersinks in these, uh, this piece is only half inch thick, so I didn't countersink the socket head cap screws all the way. But I honestly don't think these are gonna be in my way. I do, as you saw me on the surface grinder, I did chamfer these edges a little bit. But I picked up a couple pieces of uh, stock over there uh, in my bin show you how this is what this is used for off camera i made a couple of, of uh parallels to lay flat they are about ten thousandths higher than the regular jaws now here's a piece that's let me check the length on it nine inches long no way it would ever go in the vise existing vice jaws but with these I can easily uh, mount it in the jaws now mount it between the outside jaws I was looking at my hammer setting down on these these parallels I made and again this is just for a uh, quick job may need to drill a hole in it may need to uh, uh, mill a channel now other pieces, such as here's one that is too long to even go in between them. It's five inches wide. I think this is probably about 13 inches long. Yep. But I can do the same thing here. Now, let me show you what's going to happen before I ever clamp down on this. See, these jaws are together now, but I'm still not in there. Still not tighten on my workpiece. So all that's necessary to handle that is simply putting something like a, a one, two, three block. And just like that, I'm holding a five inch piece in a four inch vise. If these pieces get in the way, it's very simple to remove now with the uh, air ratchet, but I think they're going to be fine right where they are. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of these. I know there's been many times that uh, I thought about moving these and I said, well, no, it's just not worth it for that one hole to drill or whatever excuse I made myself. But with these, I think it'll be a nice addition to the vise. Hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm past the, the 10,000 subscriber mark now by the time I finish this project. Uh, I started it at around noon on a Monday, and by late that evening or later that afternoon, I had reached out of those, those other nine subscribers. So again, I thank you very much for your support of the channel, and hope you get something from this and all my other videos. Take care, and we'll see you on the next one.